So let's say now that we have our descriptive statistics that we want to create a histogram for each of these fields. Um, we can do that pretty easily. Um, there's a couple things that we're gonna wanna do. Most of it's like creating descriptive statistics. There's one difference. We're gonna have to uh, do each one individually. And um, we're probably going to have to tell it how to divide the data into bins. So if you think of a histogram, uh, there's gonna be different buckets of data and we're gonna put each item that fits into that bucket in that data. So it's going to build a frequency table. And then basically for each class, it's going to create a, essentially a bar chart. So if you think of insulation data, this is values, these are the values from one to 10. And there's no sort of, it's continue, it's not continuous data, it's discrete data. So each item can only be a number from one to 10, no decimals. So we're gonna want our bins to reflect that. So we have bins from one to 10, and this will keep Excel from automatically creating bins that don't really make a lot of sense. So once we're there, once we have our bins the way we want it, we can go ahead and um, sort of follow the steps. So we go back to data, we go back to data analysis, and we click on histogram and say, okay. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to select the input range for the data. And I'm gonna go sort of step through this. I'm gonna pick the top. I use um, shift control or shift command down arrow to get everything. And now it knows where to look for the data. Uh, notice I clicked labels because we have labels. And now I've got to tell it like, where are the bins? And again, what I'm gonna do is just go to the appropriate sheet, select my bins and go ahead and, you know, tell it where the bins are. My output range, um, I in this case, I wanna output this right below where my bins are, and then I'll sort of move it and reorganize it later. So I'm just gonna put it on the A30 cell of descriptive statistics. And then uh, make sure that you check chart output and click okay. What should come out is a frequency table and a basically a histogram. So I'm gonna move this histogram up here and I'm gonna get rid of some extra stuff that we don't really need. So we don't really need frequency. And uh, there's this chart has lots of extra space in it. So I'm probably just gonna do some things to let me condense it. So if I format that data series, I can remove the gap between each item. And I can do things like, um, I don't wanna change the fill so much, but I do wanna give it a solid line, make it a little bit different and make it fatter. So with a thicker line, we can now really see what each of those are. And if we wanna do um, a little bit more to this data series, um, we can. So um, for example, we, you know, we might decide that we wanna change a color or um, in my case, I might decide that if we go to chart design, um, I might decide that I want to have data labels. Um, so, you know, maybe a data label like, I don't know, let's think about it, outside end. And that can really be helpful for a histogram. We can spread this out and change it. I don't, I'm just gonna cover the, cover all the other data that it's based on because we don't really need it. And then with a little bit of uh, change, we can actually get through and, and take a look at what that histogram is related to insulation. And so that's pretty much how you make a histogram. Um, it takes a little time to think about what the bin should be. And of course, you know, we could decide if this should be, you know, a little narrower and, you know, things like that. But this will give you a nice description of um, the shape of the data that you're working with. And you can see we're not really working with a, um, 
We're not really working with a normal distribution in this one. We've got uh, what looks like uh, two modes. This is a, a bimodal um, based on what we're looking at. So that's how you make a histogram in Excel.